What's up guys? A couple of days ago we made a homemade dip out of fire cured lemon and a couple of ingredients using the snooze method. Uh, and this stuff is good. It tastes a lot like the string birds grove that I made in another video and you can check that out here-ish. But uh, because we didn't ferment it, because we used the snooze method, and if you don't know what that is, check out my first video on this channel. All we're doing is taking the tobacco and steam cooking it under pressure. You can do that with a pressure cooker, and you can do that with a mason jar in a pot of water. But the best way to do it is in the instant pot. You get the most consistent results. And you can share recipes with a remarkable degree of accuracy. Others on my channel who watch my channel have tried out these recipes and said that it turns out fantastic, which is awesome. It's all I could ever have hoped for. But with dip, it's slightly different because Swedish noose is pasteurized. You'd expect the flavors that come out of the pasteurization. But with dip, two things are going on that are different. One is that it's made with fire cured tobacco. It gives it a smokier taste. And those tastes are preserved in the pasteurization process. But number two is that dip, at least in the United States, is, well, there are the odd exceptions. You have things like Seneca. You have things like, uh, ba, ba, ba. what's another one that's pasteurized? Pinkerton snuffs stuff. So things like Longhorn, things like Timberwolf are all made with fire cured tobacco, but they're pasteurized. So you get an idea of how applicable the pasteurization process is to a dip that's totally fine and completely usable. Even the fire cured thing doesn't apply to everything. Um, Copenhagen Wintergreen Smooth is a snooze that's uh, snooze is a dip that's made with air cured tobacco. It even says as much on their official website, but it's still fermented, so you get an idea of. The, the, where does the line kind of begin and end? I think if we just call it like it is, dip is snooze, then you can kind of mix and match the different methods to get a product that you think is pretty tasty. We've got our dip. It smells delicious. Take a whiff and describe to you what I'm smelling. It smells like uh, smoke, wood, hardwood like uh, mesquite almost the smell of meat but not quite not uh more savory than meaty and that's good but it's missing one key flavor and it's the flavor of the fermentation process if you look around on the internet you can find the lists of ingredients for dip in the united states and a lot of them contain some percentage of ethyl alcohol now, in pasteurized snooze, I think that's added, and in, well, in pasteurized dip, I believe that is added, but in fermented dip, I think a little bit may be added as a preservative, but I think the majority of the alcohol content comes from fermentation. Now, what are some other things that you can add to your homemade dip that make it taste and smell of the fermentation process. And the most obvious answer is soy sauce. It's got a lot of the same flavors. If you don't know how soy sauce is made, they take soybeans, they take wheat, they put them in a big barrel and they let it run. They add some salt, they add some water, they let it brew up and you get a nice little sauce. I think we're gonna get something that tastes pretty, pretty close to Copenhagen long cut or copenhagen snuff and just to scent and flavor match i'm actually dipping some copenhagen snuff right now i've always liked these little metal tins kind of disappointed that uh snooze very rarely comes in them i think it's very very classical very rugged very outdoorsy very traditional the way we're gonna do this because i'm not quite sure on the ratios usually i just ought, eyeball it but I figure that somebody should be a little bit methodical about this. There are some good threads on forms like Fair Trade Tobacco and Snuff House about soy sauce content in homemade dip, but there are very few and far between, and there aren't videos on YouTube about it. So the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna add quarters of my, well, I'm gonna add 25 grams of my finished long cut dip 
that we are going to add soy sauce. I'm going to give it a taste and compare that with the dip, the pinch of the Copenhagen snuff that I already have in my lip. I've been dipping this stuff for a while, been dipping it all week just to get an idea of what flavor should be in there. I'm going to start with adding 25 grams. Let's start adding our soy sauce. Let me open this up just so I can side by side sniff. Just to get a baseline. Copenhagen snuff, if you've never smelled it, and if you're foreign, meaning not from the United States, it's very likely that you have. Uh, it smells like it's a little bit sweet. It definitely smells like it's got a little bit of fermentation in there. Kind of like soy sauce. It smells like that. It's got almost a rye bread. We're at 27 grams. You know what? I want to be a little bit more disciplined about this. Let's get that to the even 25. And I'm going to go adding. Let's start with two grams. Maybe three. Bring it up to 28. Soy sauce is pretty potent. Whoa, okay. I guess we're doing four grams to start. Soy sauce is pretty pungent on its own, so it's not gonna take a lot to flavor this, I don't think. I'm gonna mix that in really well. Also, something you'll find with the recipe in the dip that we made if you're following along at home is that it's a little bit drier than dip that comes out of the store. Um, I'm not going to pretend like this isn't an accident, but it's sort of a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You do want a little bit of a drier final product to begin flavoring with just because when you start adding different liquids, even if you're keeping it to just essential oils, uh, the moisture builds up very, very quickly and it can get out of hand very fast. No propylene glycol in this unless I feel a need for it, unlike the snus, and I really don't like adding propylene glycol to my snus to begin with. I only made the video on it for you guys because you guys seem so keen on finding it out as a final ruling on propylene glycol. If it doesn't need it, don't put it in. Easy. Okay, let me take a pinch of this. This is the four grams of soy sauce, 25 grams of dip pinch. Ooh, very smoky. Much smokier than Cope Snuff actually is. This is the spittoon for today. I used to own a mud jug, and they are really, really cool if you can get your hands on some. But, uh, God, they're a pain in the ass to clean. And if you dip anything but wintergreen, the fucking foul stench that comes out of those mud jugs if you forget to clean them for a single day. I think four grams might be it, guys. So if we pull that up to uh, the 100 gram standard, then that's going to be 16 grams of soy sauce. Um, I haven't played around with the sodium-free soy sauce. I imagine that you do want to have the salt content that's present in the additional soy sauce. It's not like you're eating this stuff anyways, so there's no need to watch the sodium content. It's got a good mouthfeel. It's nice and smoky. No sticks in this, because I'm not a doofus, and I did remove all the mid-rib from the dip. It's releasing the moisture like it should be. It's getting into the saliva pretty well. I like it, guys. I think four grams it. I'm not going to go any further. I'm not going to add more to another batch. I'm not going to go less on another batch. But this brings us to an interesting point, right? Original snuffs are fine and dandy. Original dips are fine and dandy. But what about the most popular flavor of dip? Because it is an original. It's wintergreen. 
and I figure let's try and get some winter green too. Um, as far as I'm aware, they start with the long cut dip because Cope Snuffer, Cope Long Cut, is just the fermented tobacco, as far as I know. Maybe there are some additional ingredients that sauce the tobacco before they put it into the barrels, but I think they start with the long cut and then they add additional flavor as they go along. But there are two ingredients that we do need. We need wintergreen oil, and they do use some different essential oils in the wintergreen. It's not purely wintergreen, but this is all I have because I can't get my hands on stuff like uh, the more complicated salicylates and additional flavors. And they also add plain old saccharin. This is the pink packet. You can find it under the brand name Sweet and Low, sometimes under other stuff. So let's set it to tear again. Remember, this is our quarter ratio. And this is not going to be much. This is a gram of saccharin. And I really don't think we'll need a whole heck of a lot for this. As a smell comparison and a taste comparison, I do have Copenhagen Wintergreen with me. It is pretty sweet, especially Copenhagen Wintergreen. Uh, I prefer Wintergreen Smooth just because I think it tastes better. It's got kind of a honey note because they use uh, what I believe to be air-cured Virginia, I think. So it's got kind of that honey tea note in the background. I think it's just a better dip, but Copenhagen Wintergreen is pretty good too. And I think this year they've been doing some pretty good batches because last year uh, it could get kind of ashy. And if you dip Copenhagen Wintergreen, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you get to, uh, you get to the end of a dip around the 30, 40 minute mark and it starts to taste a little bit like charcoal which is not good, but this year they've been good. So, you know what? I'm gonna go all in with that saccharin and mix it up pretty good. If you have liquid saccharin at home, sure, fine, awesome, use it. Powdered saccharin is liquid saccharin on a base of maltodextrin anyways. Just find the appropriate conversions for the packets if this turns out pretty good going to kind of compress it to release the juices in the tobacco so all of that liquid saccharin gets picked up. That was six drops. Let's mix it in. Very familiar with the taste of what Copenhagen Wintergreen tastes like, so I'll tell you right away if this is hot or not. Pretty chalky smell coming off of this. Not quite as chalky as you'd imagine a straight Wintergreen to be. Give it a whiff. Give a couple whiff. I think we may have gone two drops too far on this. I'm gonna dip it and I'll tell you what I think. That's good, okay. Um, It doesn't taste like Cope. It doesn't taste like Copenhagen wintergreen. It tastes like a very good wintergreen dip, a very natural wintergreen flavor, if that makes any sense. Um, not chalky, very sweet because of the saccharin we added. I think one packet of powdered saccharin to every 25 grams was the right call. It's nice and sweet like a wintergreen dip should be. And the, well the mouth feels tremendous. It does feel like a wintergreen dip. Now that I think about it, and now that I have it in my mouth for, for some time, I think this might be okay. It's not as strong as I thought it was going to be. I think that might have just been the mouthfeel scaring me. It's not quite as strong as I thought it was going to be. Very juicy. Juices up very well. Um, yeah. Okay. 
six drops should do it. This tastes pretty dang neat. I can see myself using this and pretty handy that dip containers are very rugged to begin with, a lot more rugged than snooze containers. These are definitely reusable. You just want to be careful that you don't, uh, every time you do refill these, you kind of want to give the top a wipe because the coating is a little bit thin, especially on cheaper dip cans and can corrode. So it's something to be mindful of if you are using these, but if you have some beeswax at home, you can always just rub a little bit on the top and that should keep you in good, uh, should keep you with fresh dip for as long as possible. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not even unpleasant to gut. I just accidentally swallowed some and it's pretty good. Nicotine is definitely there too. This is a good base recipe, guys. It's gonna be around snooze level strength, so none of these massive three finger pinches that you see on YouTube. I take snooze size pinches a dip anyways. It's all about the flavor for me and the nicotine. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah, okay. That tastes pretty, pretty good. I think that's it. If you like this sort of thing, me playing around with homemade tobaccos, teaching you how to make your own, be sure to like and subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming up, a lot of good stuff for you guys, a lot of fun experiments, products that you may enjoy. And if you do have a product that you would like to try or have me try and make, just go ahead and give me, uh, give me a link to it in the comments section. Stay tuned, like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Happy dipping.